go. Please connect with me. One of the things that will happen is that when you do, it expands your network because then you're connected to all of my people as well. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to start sharing screen again because we're going to talk about LinkedIn. And by the way, when we do this, all your questions are absolutely, whoops, welcome. Okay. There we go. All right. So for most, can't do this on my own. So let me see if I can go to somebody else's profile. Somebody willing to let me take a look at your profile that I am not connected to. I believe we're connected, so I can't do that. I don't know if we're connected. I, so Jennifer, is it okay if I use you as an example? Since yes, you said I was just request? And yes, of course, I was going to invite you to do that. Okay, great. So by the way, when you get a connection request, unless you specifically know the person, okay, and all, in this group, you you do. But I always go to the person's profile before I hit accept or, or ignore. I want to know a little bit more about them. And since we are not yet connected, this gives me an opportunity to take a look at your profile and show you what I look for and what you should be looking for as well. So, okay, there we go. So I'm going to take a look at the profile to do a couple of things. I'm going to see whether or not Number one, Jennifer, you're a real person. Which means that that profile picture has to be there. I know a lot of us are uncomfortable with that. But one of the things that you did, Jennifer, that I love is that you not only have that picture and it's a, a good picture of you, although I would recommend that you you resize that picture if you're going to use it. I want to see more of you and your face than the background and your the rest of your body. Okay, so rule of thumb is that your face should take up about 75% of that circle. Okay, so that's that's number one. But having that picture there is important and it's important to do what Jennifer did. We aren't connected yet. So she's making that picture available to anyone on LinkedIn. Unless you do that, when you come up in a search and we have no connections, then I may not see who you are. And we found that recruiters, hiring managers, even other people just viewing profiles are 80% less likely to click into your profile if they cannot see a picture. So go in and not only put that picture there, but make sure that when you do, you are making that picture available to anyone on LinkedIn. Okay, so that's number one. Another thing that you can do is you can go over here to the more section, more setting. And one of the things that I want to do is I want to go down here where it says about this profile. about this profile is going to tell me more about whether or not this is a real person. Because unfortunately, we are finding that there are a number of AI generated, bot generated, um, fake profiles out there. LinkedIn is working very hard to eliminate them, but you wanna make sure if you can, that what you're doing is that you are connecting with real people because the real people are those who are going to be able to most expand your network. So what I did was I went into the more. And I went down here to where it says about this profile. And it tells me when Jennifer joined LinkedIn. When she updated her information. That's important to know because it tells me that you are at least making use of the platform. You're not just letting it sit out there. And we're going to talk about another reason to do it. The other thing that I'm noticing here from this about that, this profile, and it's something I'm going to recommend is where it says the verification. LinkedIn within the last 
six months to a year, has offered the ability to verify your profile. You can verify it either with a company email address that they can verify or by uploading a government ID. I know it's scary. I don't like to share my information either. But Clear is a firm that has been used nationwide in a variety of platforms. It's one that I trust. It takes a look at your, your in this case, your driver's license versus your photograph. And it will take a photograph of you on screen at the same time. And it verifies that you are who you say you are. It then deletes that information from their system. So they don't hold on to that information in a database. But now once you've done that, you become a verified individual on LinkedIn and that gives your profile more credibility. I recommend that you do it. And you'll see that verification both in that about your this profile section as well as you'll see it here, right on the profile itself. Again, more likely to get those contacts if you have been verified. I don't have any specific numbers on that one yet, but all of the, the word of mouth and everything else tells me that that's what, what that is. All the LinkedIn experts that I'm talking to suggest it. So I would suggest it too. I'm going to come back to, um, let's see. On some people's profiles when you're going in, okay? Right now, all I can see is accept. But normally in this blue circle here, it would say either connect or it would say follow. Your goal as much as possible is to connect. The difference between a connection and a follower, if we're connected, you then become connected to all of my connections. It's um, like the old six degrees of Kevin Bacon, if you've ever heard about that. Everybody is connected to everybody is connected to everybody one way or another. The difference between connections and followers is if you are connected to me, you then become connected to everyone in my network. My first level connections become your second level. That's those second level connections become your third level. So it expands exponentially. Number of people that will see what you do, the number of people that can reach out to you. Sorry. Okay. It's important. When you are connected to somebody, you are also following them, which means that you are more likely to see their posts. They're also more likely to see yours. So here's another distinction between a follower and connection. If you're following me, you're going to see my posts. I'm not necessarily going to see yours pop up in my newsfeed. If we're connected, it's that two-way street. I see what you do. You see what I do. As a follower, you do not have access to my network. As somebody who's connected to me, you do. So you want to, where you can, become a connection as opposed to a follower. Which means that sometimes you're going to have to go beyond because instead of saying connect here, you're gonna to have to go search for it. It's going to be in the more box. So over here where it says follow, if my default and for mine, LinkedIn has made my default follow rather than accept or then connect. So for me, you would have to go in here where it says the drop down box more, and here it would say connect rather than follow. Remember, always if you're sending a connection request, there needs to be a reason. Please, please, please do not send a connection request without a message. Okay, we can do it here because we all know I've got your names, I know who you are. But connection request without a message is less likely to be accepted. It also isn't polite. And while LinkedIn is business networking, that degree of connection is important, that respect, there's something about you that I want to do. 
So it could be that I've looked at your profile and I've noticed that we share something in common or we're in the same workshop. That's a great connection tool. Or, and we're gonna talk about this again, the idea of I'm following your posts or I see your, you write great things. I really appreciated what you said about this. Let's connect. Now, one of the things that I've started doing in my connection requests that seems to be working really well is instead of saying, let's connect, I ask, would you like to join my network? That whole idea of giving people a choice rather than saying, let's do it, is again, that business politeness. And my response from people has been extremely positive. Okay. So we try and do it that way. So that's the connection piece. And I think that's what I was trying to do here by looking at this. But while I'm here, let me go through a couple of other things. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you're connected to somebody or as soon as you send a connection request, you're also automatically following. So even though I haven't accepted Jennifer's request, you'll notice down here and it says that Jennifer follows me. As soon as I hit accept, okay, she's still going to be following me, but it's now going to be a connection. Ah, perfect. You changed your picture. Okay. And it should... just refreshing the screen. Now it shows that she's a first level connection. Okay. All right. Since I'm on your profile, I'm gonna talk about another couple of things and make a couple of suggestions that I'd like you all to think about. Jennifer lists herself as coming from Batavia, Illinois. When you're going into, actually, I'm going to go back to me for a minute. Oops. And I'm going to edit my profile just to show you. So if I'm putting in my location, If I just type in where I live, okay, because it gives me the opportunity to put in a zip code. I'm going to take the zip code out for the moment. Oh, interesting. It's not letting me, they've changed some things. Okay. So you have to put in a zip code in order to put in a location. If you just leave it with the United States, you're not going to be found. If you put in just a city like you did with Batavia, you are less likely to be found because normally if I'm doing a search, I'm not going to search for a specific city unless I'm working for the city of Batavia. As a recruiter, as a hiring manager, as somebody who's searching LinkedIn for people to connect with, to talk to, you're better off doing that broad metropolitan area. So even though your zip code is there, you want to be able to say greater Chicago if this is the area you live in. Look for the biggest metropolitan area near where you live and put that in. The zip code will help refine the search, but you are more likely to be found if you use that metro area and use the drop down box. That makes sense? Yep, that's yep. So I would change that. By the way, here's another quick trip. You all know that you want your profiles to be read by LinkedIn and you want to be found by LinkedIn and the LinkedIn algorithms. If you make any change on your profile, even if you are changing something and then putting it right back, then LinkedIn will, in effect, re-index your profile. It looks as though you've made a change, that there's something new they need to find. 
So I recommend going in and changing something on your profile every two weeks, minimum of once a month. Again, it can be very some, something very simple. You can do something and then back away. And then the day later, go back and change it back. Or even later in the day, go back and change it back. But that change triggers something in the LinkedIn system that says, this is a profile I want to now bring to the top because there's something new. So I suggest you do that. So Jennifer, you just changed your picture. That's going to make the trigger. If you change from Batavia to Greater Chicago, that's going to make a trigger. It doesn't have to be a lot. And again, you can do it and then immediately change it back. But that's one of the things you want to do is at least once a month, go in and make some sort of a change. Okay. So what questions do you all have about LinkedIn? I wrote down some of them that you all asked, but let me ask you all to, to share some and we'll make sure that we do it. And anybody who wants me to take a quick profile look, I'm happy to do that too. Can you just show where you, you changed that contact info to greater Chicago area, where was that listed? Okay, so when you're editing your profile, you see these pencils. The pencils are your edit tool. So I'm gonna go back home to just show you for a moment. So you go in and you go into your profile. So you can do it two ways. You can either go over here to the left where you see your picture in a big way, or you go, I prefer going in over here on the top where it says me because then I can do a variety of different things. So in this case, what I want to do is view my profile. And now I can edit wherever I want to be. So if I wanted to change that location, I'm gonna use this second pencil. The top one is just for the banner in your, in your picture. But I'm gonna use this pencil. And now it's, thank you. It's that basic information about me. Oops. Interesting. I'm glad I went back in and looked. Somehow or another changed something. All right. So that, that's an important thing to do is to check every once in a while because sometimes LinkedIn will change things. So now I'm back to me. And where I went to do this is down here where it says location. So your location is where do you live? Okay, it's US. Then you put in your zip code. And I'm putting in Greater Chicago. And now I'm going to save it. And I'm back to me. The greater Chicago, when I, actually it's not, changed it back again. So I went and didn't save it. So keep checking because LinkedIn is flaky sometimes. But this says greater Chicago, which is what I want, but why didn't it show up there? I find that you have to refresh your screen. Yep. I'm doing. There we go. Okay. Now, also beside my name, you'll also notice that I've got my pronouns. Pronouns are an important piece to add. LinkedIn gives you the ability to do it. And I would do it with their drop down box rather than just typing it in. <clears throat> Double check your contact information. Again, you can do it in um, with the pencil to make sure that it's right. But you wanna make sure that you've got an email address in there that is not related to your old company. If you have, 
Okay. Your email address that is company related, whether you're looking, so let's say you're working for somebody and you want to go someplace else, make sure you have that backup email address that is a personal one. Because when you lose your job, when the job loses you, that email address immediately goes away and you can no longer access it. And people can't contact you directly through LinkedIn. In fact, you may lose access to your LinkedIn profile. So always put in that backup email address. You can have two and you can list which one is going to be important. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that in my contact information, I included my email address. You can make that visible to people. I recommend that because otherwise the only contact information, if I hit it, is going to be back to your LinkedIn profile. It's that round robin. You're not giving me those options of how to find you. Okay. Questions about that top piece? Okay. So whose profile can I take a look at? And one of the questions, and hi, Carrie, you want to introduce yourself? I saw you walk in. Hello, Linda, how are you? Good, thank you, how are you? Good. Did you want me to introduce myself? Is that what you just asked? Oh, I did. Oh, sure. Um, so my name is Carrie Schneider. I am, as I kind of put in the chat too, I am a veteran, if you will, or graduate, you could say, of Linda's Lunch and Learn group. Um, I'm currently the operations manager at Pads of Elgin. And I've been here for about five weeks. So I, I really do enjoy what I'm doing. But as I stated, uh, I just want to jump on and congratulate you, Linda, on kind of going off on your own. It's really nice to see some new faces in the group. I'm happy to connect with anybody, happy to support you. Um, I gained a wealth of knowledge from attending Linda's Lunch and Learn. So, and I always learn something new every day. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you. Of course, and congratulations on the job. I'm glad to hear that it's going well. Thank you. Okay, and you're welcome anytime, by the way. Okay, so what questions do you all have about LinkedIn? Where can I point you before I start going off on some things on my own? Linda, I this is Tara. I, I do have a question. Um, yes. You know, with me being... Um, kind of unclear as to my goals. Um, with what I have on my LinkedIn, and it puts you in, there's this area where you put in a category of what you're searching for. Um, <clears throat> I am uncertain as to where, Okay. Uh, I, I'm not, because I'm not getting any, any views, maybe I'm under the wrong category. Uh, look under corn forth. Because I have uh, just changed, literally just changed my name okay. back to your name this week. Did I um, spell it right? No, actually changed it. K-O-R-N-F-O-R-T-H? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I see that Zoom needs to be updated. C-O-R-N-F-O-R-T-H. C-O-R. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to view your full profile before I connect. Okay. Okay. Just to do it here as a way of saying it. Okay. All right. So here's where you would see either connect or follow guys, and then hit the more if you want the other. So you've got greater Chicago. That's good. I'm just going to do a quick look and then we'll talk. I like okay. the fact that you've got that caregiving break in there. Okay. And that you put an end date on it. Perfect. Oops. Okay. I just want to go back to your profile. There we go. So you're gonna see now, cause I've gone in twice, you're gonna see two listings there. Okay, so 
you're concerned because you're not getting any views. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things to start with. Okay. One of the things we've found with LinkedIn, okay, is that all right? Mm -hmm. One of the things we found with LinkedIn is that they keep changing the way they do things. It A year or so ago, they'd say, you know, if you don't have a job, leave it as just open to work, don't worry about it, or just don't put anything and we'll find you. It's a better way of doing it. Now they're saying, if you don't have a current position listed, you are less likely to be found. Now, okay, there are ways around that. Okay, so for example, and they give you that three month window. So you're all right, you're at the end of that. So after you've finished your caregiving, since you put that as July, I'm gonna have to go to me for a minute because I can't do it for anybody else. I'm going to go down and I'm going to edit my experience. So the pencil, when you're in your profile, pencil is always your editing tool. So if I hit edit, okay, it's going to allow me to change some things. Well, what I really want to do is I want to add something new. So I'm going to add a position. I am not saving this. And I'm going to call it um, whatever the job title is you're looking for. And you're going to use their drop down. One of the things that we've discovered with, recently with LinkedIn is that we all have lots of unique job titles. But unless you include a job title from their drop down box, you are less likely to be found. So even if your job title is manager of, uh, of X department, if you're gonna do that and you want to include that title to be accurate, then put in a dash and say project manager or whatever it is. It needs to be something from their drop down box because as somebody who's looking for someone on a profile, I'm looking for somebody with a skill set. I'm looking for somebody with a title. I'm not going to put in your unique title. I'm going to put in one from the drop down box. Okay. So I'm going to say project manager. And I'm going to say as an employment type, I can put it in or not. Okay. For the moment, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to put in a company name. And I'm going to say open. to work and you'll notice that when I do that, there are a lot of these that pop up. Mm. And we can, okay, you can pick any of them. It's simply the idea of having something there that looks as though it is a real company. And what we might do is we could find any of these, okay? These aren't necessarily real companies. We can even put in one that just says, we can develop our own and add it to a company page and say, open to work is the name of the company and it's job seekers seeking new opportunities. So that anybody can use it as long as we have some sort of a, a company name and a logo. But for the moment, okay, I'm going to pick one of these and I'm going to say, okay, so that it shows up and I'm going to say it's current, I'm currently working in this role. And in this case, I'm going to say that I started in August of 23. No end date because it's current. You can go back in, it's full of your industry, right? Mm. Which is important there. And okay. then, okay, you can put in whatever skills you want. 
but you're putting your job title in as what the job title is you are looking for. Okay. I know it's like a, it's a workaround. Absolutely. Okay. But it does then make you more of a viable candidate in LinkedIn's eyes. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And it's all back behind the scenes. Perfect. Great. Thank so you. If you. You're welcome. So if you, any of you who have not had a job in at least three months and three months is kind of that cutoff date, then I would add that. And if you want me to come up with a new company name called Open to Work and something there, that's fine. But nobody's going to check to see whether or not you're really there. It's just that you've got that that company name saying Open to Work and what your job title is. Great. Okay. Thank you. I will make that modification today. Okay. So that's a great way to do that. Great question. Okay. So now I'm going back to your profile again for a moment. And I am going to connect. No, no, I don't want to do that. Normally I would add a note, but I am not right now. So we want to change that. I like the fact that you've got the open to work banner. I am a believer in that. I think it works. You'll notice when you she's got the open to work banner on, which means that she's letting everybody on LinkedIn know that she is open to new opportunities. Greater Chicago. You will expand your options. I know you only want to work. Um, here, you want to look work remote. Okay. That works. You can add up to five different job titles in this open to work section. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the things that's important when you're looking at a profile, when you're putting your own profile together, remember I said that making a change someplace in your profile every month is going to help trigger that, that algorithm to bring you back to the forefront. Here's another area that you can easily make a change. Would be either your headline or moving around your skills, or even in your, let me see, in your about section, Make a quick change there. Your about section is should not be just a recap of what's in your profile. You're waste of space. You've got 2,600 characters there. And what you really want there is the, the piece that makes you stand out. Now I'm going to see, unless I click see more, let me see whether I can bring it back up again. not going to let me go back. All right, let me save you for full profile. You'll notice that I only see the top two or three lines, maybe four lines of that about section. Most people aren't going to click into see more. So there needs to be enough in that first couple of lines there to make it important that I want to read more about you and your profile. So those first three to four lines need to be your hook. They need to be engaging. They need to not only tell me about you, but give me a reason that I want to click see more because that's your opportunity to introduce you as a person. That's what makes you stand out. So I would absolutely do that. Okay. That's an area that you can easily change. Now, LinkedIn has made some changes in terms of skills that I like. And for a while, I wasn't sure about it. But the more I hear about it, the more I'm even going to add them on my profile. So LinkedIn has given us the ability to add skills in each position and to add skills 
in the that about section. If Tara were to simply say in her about section, okay, um, I'm a project manager without including that as one of the top skills, LinkedIn would not find it in its search setting. I know it's strange, but if you include it as one of those top skills, it does. More importantly, up here, it just says you have that skill. But if you include that skill in each of these positions as well, what it does is it will now tell me how many years of experience you have in that skill. So if I'm looking for somebody who's got seven years experience in project management and you've mm -hmm. got it, it here, okay, for 10 years and you've got it here for whatever, LinkedIn is going to trigger that and say you've got at least that. But if the only place you have it is in your about section, it will say you have the skill. It's not going to tell me how many years. Now, I know that adding those skills on your profile in individual areas looks a little clunky. First to admit it. It's one of the reasons that I didn't like it. But since LinkedIn is, has changed its algorithm again, it is now valuing that, so it's important to do. However, make sure that the skills you are adding there are the ones you want to be found for. And my guess is that you don't want to be doing Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. Those are kind of the givens. You get to choose. So if you want to be found and you're using that skills section, either on the profile in under experience in the about section, and we're gonna talk about the skills in a minute, you wanna make sure that the skills that I see are the ones you most want to be using in your new job. Because those are the ones, whatever you put, those are the ones I'm most likely to search and find you for. Okay, so let me go to somebody else's profile. Who's willing, uh, another person who's willing to let you me- You can do mine, mind. Marcy Costas. Hey, Marcy. I think we are connected. So, Marcy. Okay. Marcy's going to, what I want to talk first about with Marcy's profile is this banner back here in the back. We've talked about the fact that you need a profile picture and this one is great. LinkedIn has that banner behind you. It is an optional feature for you to add something, but if you're going to use it, and I highly recommend that you do, do something that makes me want to continue to talk to you. So what was the reason that you included that do what you love? Because I figured I'm looking for a job and I want to find a job that I love. And I think that people would respond to that. All right. So personally, okay. Yep. Do what you love looks more to me like you're in HR and you're a recruiter. Okay rather than looking for something else. You want that banner, that headline, that banner area there to be something that makes me want to say, oh, this is what Marcy does. Or this is something important about Marcy. If you say doing what I love is different. Okay. Okay. Just my own personal thought. Okay. It's hard finding a picture for all of this. So it's not like it the easiest thing in the world. It, it is. So there are lots of different ways that you can do it. So there are free picture sites out there. You can go to a free version of Canva and they have something called LinkedIn banners that give you some ideas. You can search Google images on LinkedIn banner and find some. Mm-hmm. Put in a, type in your own phrase, which is my guess, one of the things you may have done. Nope, I found that online. 
Perfect. Okay. So there are lots of different ways of doing it. I've some seen some people. Um, okay. If you're in sales and that's what you want to do, then you can do something that a couple of people across the desk. You can do something okay. with the product you want. You can do something since Greater Chicago. I've seen a lot of people who just do Chicago Skyline. You can do all, a variety of different things. Doing what you love is absolutely eye-catching. And what I like about it is the black banner against your face. It definitely highlights who you are. But you want this to be something that really attracts me to you and that's part of the reason so absolutely you can keep it it is unique what do you, the rest of you think it's not just me i actually have the um the city i believe behind my um picture yep okay mine is changing because i'm constantly playing with mine um mm -hmm. but mine is just a little bit about couple of words about what I do. You can do that too to highlight it. Okay. Um, so it's a, a wide variety of things that you can do out there. What I like is at least the fact that you have one. I think it's very eye-catching and that's important. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I will change it actually. Okay. Your, the next area that is going to be important, when I pull your name up in a search, I'm going to pull it up because I'm doing a search for the skills that you have, the job titles, the industry, something there is going to be something that's going to help me search. So I'm going to look at your profile in one of two ways, three ways. I'm going to have your LinkedIn URL on your resume. I've already seen your resume. I want to learn more. So I'm going to go directly there. In which case, some of this is not as important. You may come up in a search. And when it does, I'm going to see your picture, your name, what level connection we are or not at all. And I'm going to see your headline, which means that your headline, this area here, has to give me enough information to intrigue me to want to see more. which means that part of it has to be very quickly what it is you want to do. So the very first thing I see with Marcy is sales goals, including part, utilizing partner relationships. So what that tells me is that what you're trying to find is partner relationship sales. Yeah. Okay. It, okay. You want people to be intrigued and excited by what's up there. The I'll be honest with you, those headlines are tough. And okay. absolutely. But what I would do would be to include. Okay. You've got your national and regional account management. Okay. I might start with your job title the job titles you're looking for okay, and then go to exceeding the sales goals. If you wanted to leave that there, it's your teaser to get me to look at more of your profile. I like the fact that you've got your job titles that you're listing there for the open to work, which is great. Again, you've got 2,600 possible characters for your about section. The about section starts to tell your story. One of the things that I really like about your about section is that it's very personal. Remember, the about section is you, so it's written in first person as Marcy's done. But the only things I'm going to see would be those first three lines. Marcy, I would include some of those top skills here. Um, a little bit about your journey. 
perhaps your superpower, something that makes you stand out. So when you've talked about your love of American history, you've never wavered from it. You can expand on that a little bit. And how does that grow and build into what you do? Okay. That knowledge of history, that ability to, to research and learn helps you. And you can say, and it may sound a little strange, but one of the things that I've taken from that knowledge of history and that knowledge of learning is going back through and knowing how to research a company, research their product, which I bring to any position that I'm in. That love of not whatever it is. It's okay to be a little personal there the way that you were, but makes make it some sort of a tie-in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's great. And you see what Marcy did here about her open to work? That's perfect. Again, with the skills, make sure, don't overwhelm the skills in each job. Make those the clear skills that you want to be found for for that position. Communication is probably not one I'm going to do a search for. Think about- It was one that came up when, when yes. the job that I was looking at. And I understand that. So when I'm looking at the, and that's a good way of doing it, is to try and look at some of the jobs you're looking at to see what those skills might be. But think about it from the perspective of somebody who's doing a search. I have a limited number of characters or a limited number of terms I can put in whether I'm looking at resumes and trying to sort through those or whether I'm looking at for LinkedIn profiles, I'm going to put in the terms that are most likely to narrow my search to the candidates who would be most likely to be able to fill my position. Almost every position out there, communication is going to show up. So a Microsoft Word. But that's not one of the terms I'm going to use to narrow my search for a salesperson. Or a project okay. manager. This came up with LinkedIn net the, the LinkedIn system where it basically said you're missing communication from this job that I was applying for. And that's so okay. that's how I got information and analytical skills. I had those in, but they were not at the forefront. So there's a difference, and that's an important point. Okay. So let me see if I can go down to your skills. So one of the problems with that LinkedIn tool or many of those others that are out there like JobScan is it's going to read everything that's in there. But even though it says it's looking for all of those things, think about it again from that Boolean search term. If I'm looking for all of this, what am I looking for to find most? Very few people are going to use that LinkedIn tool to try and find candidates who match everything because they know it's not going to be a match. What it is suggesting, if it uses that term communication, is that someplace you might want to have communication in there, but you can also talk about communication and your communication skills up here. Oops. One of the problems with sharing screen on LinkedIn is that all my messages pop up. Sorry about that. So there are lots of different ways of doing it. But be selective, even though it's listing it. If you were going to list it, that's fine, but don't make that the first one. Again, remember, I have to click see more to see all of those. Is there a way to prioritize those? I don't know. Or just eliminate the skills from those jobs, from the job. I would probably eliminate the skills from the job so that you can make sure that the new ones, the ones that you want really show up. Okay. Okay. If I'm looking, remember I said that one of the reasons for putting the skills in with each job right now is that, well, tell me how many years experience you have. I'm not looking for somebody who's got 12 years of experience in communication, unless I'm doing some sort of a writing position. 
Okay. And then I'm going to be looking for something more specific. But I do want to go back down here and look at your skills. You know that you can have up to 50 skills that you list. I yeah. would highly recommend that you get as close to those 50 as you can. I have 49 skills. I see that, <laughs> which is great. And because you and I are first level connections, I can endorse you for those skills. Endorsements are important. And if you're from LinkedIn and you're on here, I'm going to say something that I might shouldn't probably say, but from the standpoint of, from my own personal standpoint, those endorsements don't mean anything. I don't really have to know whether or not you are skilled in this area for me to endorse you. Once we are first level connections, all I have to do is click the button. The reason that I encourage people to get those endorsements is because LinkedIn's algorithm values them. Unless you have at least one endorsement for that skill, it will no, not show up in a LinkedIn search. Because we are connecting with one another, once you connect and you become those first level connections, message this person from this group and say, would you please endorse me for, and then give them up to five skills. And then ask what you want to you them to endorse you for. So it doesn't, all I have to do is say yes. All I have to do is click on it. I don't honestly have to know. LinkedIn values it, so we're going to do it. So since I'm here, Marcy, what five things would you like me to endorse you for? Um, channel account management, channel sales, um, consultative selling, and strategic partnerships. You have to find it. Now you'll notice that I'm going all the way down here to try and find those. Okay, I already endorsed you for those. So I had endorsed you for some of these to begin with because we've worked together before. Now, what's important though, is that when I look at your profile, unless I clicked see more, I only saw two of those skills, maybe three, okay, if, you didn't, if you don't have the the where you did it, the five experiences, the six experiences, I would see three on your profile. Because you've included those, and I encourage that now, I'm only going to see two. So the only two that I see on your profile, Marcy, would be communication and presentation skills. Okay. Okay. So there are ways you can get around that. LinkedIn automatically... The default is to list those skills in the by the number of endorsements that you have for that skill or the number of experiences, okay? In this case, it's number of experiences rather than, than endorsements. But again, I have to go into me to show you. But you can choose to rearrange them. So if I'm going back into view profile for me, And I'm going down to the skills section. This point you want to edit. By the way, to add demonstrate the skills, that's where you put them. The you know you did it here in the, in this junk money, this company, this company, and it'll show up. All right, but I want to edit them. And you've got these three dots. So if you click on the three dots, you'll see that there are several ideas. One is the endorsement settings. Make sure your endorsement settings are all set to on. You want to be endorsed. You want people to be able to endorse you. You want to be able to get those connection requests or those endorsement requests. But here's where I really want to go, which is the reorder. You want to be able to change those in that skill section and the way they show up on your profile for the ones that are most important in terms of the jobs you are looking for. 
So if you put your cursor over here to the right, to these lines, you can move it around. Make sure that at least your top 10 are the ones you most to be found for. And those top two are incredibly important because especially if you've added the where did you do these, the only thing I'm going to see on your profile unless I click more would be those top two. So three hints about the skills section, four hints. Number one, make sure that you use as many of those 50 skills as you can. And yes, you can type in your own skill if it's not in a drop-down box, just to add something. So for example, I may add on mine next forever jobs. I can add it, LinkedIn will allow me to do it, but nobody's gonna search on it because it's not one of the standard terms. So as much as possible, you wanna make sure that your skills are those that are in the drop-down boxes because those are the searchable terms. You want to get an endorsement for those at least top 10 skills, those top 10 terms that you want to be found for. If there is not at least one endorsement, LinkedIn will not include it in the search when you, or you will not be included in the search if I am searching for somebody with those skills, even though you have it listed. You will show up higher in the search if I'm searching for that term. The more endorsements that you have, and the closer we are in terms of connection. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. All, important. Absolutely. And make sure, because I'm only going to see those two skills on your profile, unless I click see more, that those two skills are the ones you most want to be found for. Okay. All right. How do you move them? I'm having trouble moving them up and down. So you're in the skills section, Marcy. You go yeah. to these, you, you're editing. I'm in the three dots and I went to the dots. reorder and I can't reorder them. So if you go to reorder, hover your cursor over here to these lines. Yep. And you'll see your hand, put the hand pop up. Yep. You have to keep your cursor down, keep pressing on it. Wait a minute. Let me mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Maybe LinkedIn is having a glitch all of a sudden. Uh huh. Okay. LinkedIn has been having some problems off and on. Apparently, yeah. When they add something new or when they're in the process, they mess things up for a while. I was trying to do a LinkedIn Live with somebody yesterday, and LinkedIn wasn't allowing you to enter the, the program. So let's see. Okay. So I'm back here. So the three dots, reorder the skills, hover over where you want to be, hold the cursor down, and it's not working right now. So it's not okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> but you, you know how to do it. Yeah. Okay, when LinkedIn frees that up again. Okay. Um, Linda, I have a question. Yes. For you. Um, sorry. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, <clears throat> for instance, I just was looking at my LinkedIn while we're going through this um, group discussion. And when you see that somebody, your application was viewed by someone, is it a good idea to possibly go back to whoever the job poster was and say, you know, I saw that you, you know, were interested in my um, application, would you like to speak? Or how do, do you follow up on it? Or do you just leave it? And if they call you, they call you. So there are two things. So if, when you say that they, they viewed it, are you mm -hmm. saying that they looked at your profile? Right. So, so I applied for a position and it says your application was viewed for local account manager at people ready. Okay. 
So if there is the name of a recruiter associated with the position, mm -hmm. then what I would try and do would be to message that person and say, you know, um, just wanted you to know that I applied for such and such a position. Please take a look at my my resume, my profile. Love to chat with you about it uh, and talk more. Okay. Okay. Or you could do that. Okay. You can also, even if they haven't looked at your profile or you don't know that they've gotten it, mm -hmm. if there is a recruiter name, somebody who's posted the job, okay. Um, let's look for a job call for whatever reason. Um, sales manager, just because I want to look at, see if I can find something real quick. I'm just looking for one that gives me, so for example. So this one says, here's the person that's hiring for this job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can find her on LinkedIn and immediately go in and say, you know, I've just applied for this position. I'm really excited about it. Please take a look. Okay. Okay. I just want to let you know that I'm there. Mm -hmm. You can go further and say, you know, I'd like to be able to talk to you. Most recruiters are not as excited about the, I'd like to, the, the pushy, let's talk. Right. Okay. But it's a great position. Um, just wanted to let you know that, that I was really excited and I've applied. Please take a look at my information. Let me know if there are any questions I can answer. Recruiters like that because so few people do it. Okay. Okay. It's another way of making that connection. Now. And it's subtle too. It's very subtle. It's not pushy. Right. right? And that's important. Now you'll notice that for this job, one of the things that it does is it gives you the option to do the easy apply. Don't. The reason that I say don't do easy apply is that easy apply basically gives you it lets them upload a copy of your profile, which is static, right? It's generic. You don't necessarily get a chance to do much more than that. LinkedIn has also made some other changes. I used to say that it didn't matter where you applied for the job, whether you applied, if it's posted on LinkedIn, Indeed, wherever, that it didn't really matter because it's going to end up in the same place anyway. And that's true. However, your information will get into the company's systems, which means recruiter's hands, faster if you apply directly on the company site. Makes so sense. my recommendation now is if you see a job posted, even if you see it posted here on LinkedIn, Go to the company website instead and apply directly on the company website. Then you can go back to the recruiter here and say, by the way, okay, I just sent my application in on your website, you know, on your jobs portal. Please take a look. Makes sense. Okay. So I would do that regardless of where the job is posted. It's another way, by the way, of doing that little fact check. Mm -hmm. Many times, unfortunately, there are, I don't wanna say scam jobs, but jobs that really aren't real that are posted and they'll be posted on Indeed and they'll be posted on LinkedIn. But unless it's actually still active on the company's website, it isn't necessarily a real job. Okay. <clears throat> one more thing here. You'll notice that this one says it has 54 applicants. It's really not an applicant. 
right now I count as an applicant. That number is really how many people actually clicked into the job, not how many people have applied. LinkedIn can only count in terms of applications, the number of people who apply for the job, in this case, using the easy apply. But what they're counting is the number of people who click into the job because they can do that. They can't measure or have no way of knowing how many people have applied for a job through the company website, through Indeed or any other source. Don't let yourself be uh, concerned if you see that the number of applicants is really large, it really might be, but it could also be people who are just browsing. Okay. So for example, in this case, it gives you the option of directly messaging her, which is a good thing. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me see. I want to clear this one. LinkedIn's navigation is slow today. All right. But I wanted to go over here for a minute because there are a couple of things that, again, are new that I'd like you to be aware of. Down here in application set settings. There's something that I'm now recommending that I have never recommended before because LinkedIn has a new feature. You know that I don't believe in uploading a resume to LinkedIn. I don't want you posting it on your profile. Your resume needs to be changed every time you send it out. It needs to be tailored to the job. So one of you mentioned that sometimes you get frustrated and you send the same resume out to everybody. That's called a spray and pray. It does you very little good. However, LinkedIn now has given us the ability to share information that goes beyond your profile with recruiters. It's not that they're going to necessarily see that resume, but when they're doing the search, if information is on that resume that is not on your profile, it will still be clicked, picked up in those search algorithms. So I am now suggesting that you go over here, you're in the jobs tab, application settings, turn on, Unfortunately, you have to turn on save uploaded resumes and answers, but you're not applying on LinkedIn, so it doesn't make any difference. You're not saving the answers. But you can only save an uploaded resume if you then, okay, which is what you want to do. You want to share your resume data with recruiters. That gives you that added information that goes above and beyond your profile without posting it up there. It doesn't limit you in terms of what you can send for a specific job. It simply adds additional information into the LinkedIn search engine so that when somebody is searching for someone like you, that information from your resume will show up. It's not the resume itself, it's that background information. So what I am now recommending is that you do upload a resume and you need to do it, okay, well, you can do it as a, a doc, a docx, or a PDF. And you can upload more than one. I wouldn't do too many. But once you make that then available, it that information in that generic resume or that resume that you say most, most matches some of the jobs is now fed into the LinkedIn search engine to help find you. Okay. This is new within the last month or so. I can't tell you how effectively it works, but I think it's worth trying. I'm sorry, I might've missed this. How did you get there? I can't figure out how you got oh. to that screen. That's fine. So I went to jobs. Okay. 
Where? Hold on. Yeah. So your toolbar up top. Okay. So I'm home. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to the jobs tab, the briefcase. Okay. Over here on the left, application settings. Okay. Okay. So I'm turning on the first two buttons. Okay. And then you can upload a resume or two. Okay. Okay. Now I want to go back though for a minute. Again to the over here. We've not talked about the fact that you want to dem demonstrate those skills. But I want to go into job alerts for a minute. Okay. So let's say I want to search for a job. And I've got this one set up the, okay. One of the things that you can do is you don't just have to search by job title. You can search by skill set. So I could search and I can do a Boolean search. So I could say um, sales and all in caps. Um, <laughs> um, give me a product, let's say, and, uh, So I put in a Boolean search that's going to give me all of those terms. I'm using LinkedIn as a sales, as a search engine to help find what it is I'm looking for. So now in that search, I was able to search by skill set rather than title. And now I can go in and I can look at whether or not it's on-site or remote. And I'm gonna say hybrid and remote. And I've got 456 results. And maybe I'll say I'm looking for mid-senior level. Now, unfortunately with these levels, they really don't mean anything. It's not an, a LinkedIn criteria that says you get to, if it's X number of years of experience, it qualifies as this, the poster gets to say what it is. But for the moment, let me just do this. Maybe. Now I've got 333 results. And I wanna look now for jobs that have been posted within the past month. Now it's 329, so let me change it again, and I'm going to say instead of past month, let's say past week, because I'm assuming that you're active enough that you're checking often. Now I've got 143. So it's a way of trying to find jobs based on what it is you're looking for. And let's say that I want to go back in and change this, and I'm going to take this out. and see what happens. Now I've got 11,000 jobs. It's based on what it is you're looking for. Okay. And education maybe is not the right term, so let's look at... Um, SAS. Now I've got a lot of a different way of looking at it and it keeps changing what I'm finding. When you do your searches, you can search by title, you can search by industry, you can search by company, you can search by location. You can do a Boolean search and put several skills areas up there, several skills terms and see what you can find. 
Now, what you can also do is once you've done that, you can save that search and, okay. Set up a job alert. Oh, well, they're adding new things down the bottom. I'd be careful about these things here, the commitments that the company is making. Those, this is new to LinkedIn. Um, I don't think that it's going to really add much to your search. And I think that there are so few companies that are including it that it's not going to be there. But it gives you lots of different ways of filtering your search. I have another question. Yes. Okay. Um so my premium account is up for renewal, I guess. Yep. And it's asking if I want to use premium for my personal goals as part of my job or other. Okay. What do you suggest? Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't suggest premium account. Okay. okay. You can use it, absolutely. And when it's asked if you are using a premium account, I mean, there are some advantages to it. If you're using a premium account and it's saying, are you using it for you for job search, whatever, that's really just for their behind the scenes. It's not going to change what your account does. It's simply what it's going to show you most. Okay, so don't do it then. It's up to you. So here's okay. the advantages of using a premium account. I will tell you that I have never used it before. And I've been on LinkedIn since probably 2007. And even in my roles um, as a headhunter, executive search recruiter, or an internal recruiter, I never used a premium account and I was fine. They are, however, changing their rules to try and encourage more people to get those premium accounts because that's the way they make money. Right. So there are some job seeker features that are going to be available only to people with a premium account. I can tell you more about those as I learn more about them, but here would be the only reasons in my mind right now to use a premium account. If you are a heavy user of LinkedIn learning, that's a good thing. You can use it that way and you can add those skills directly to your profile. You can also just do a free 30 day LinkedIn premium account, take as many of those courses as you want to add to your profile, and then cancel the trial. The other advantage of a LinkedIn premium account is that you can message other people. You can use what's called an in-message. Right, and I've yeah. used that before. Okay. <clears throat> in-messages give you the ability to message people you are not connected to. Mm -hmm. So here's a workaround. Now, oh, workaround first for the LinkedIn learning is both that 30-day trial, as well as the fact that some libraries offer LinkedIn learning to people who have a library card with them, their patrons. Okay. If you want to get around the idea of messaging other people, the LinkedIn default is that if I have a premium account, People can only message me if we are connected or if they also have a premium account. You can go into your settings and change that and make yourself open to messaging from everyone. And you guys should all do that. If you are trying to get in touch with somebody who has that LinkedIn premium and is only accepting messages from people who also have that premium account, or who also have, um, who are already connected and you can't get around it, you can always send a connection request. Right. Okay. But again, there has to be a reason to do it. So there are lots of ways around it. Another reason for doing the LinkedIn account, premium account, mm -hmm. is that you get to see the number of people who, not just the number of people, but you get to see more of the people who've actually looked at your profile. Right. 
and I've had it before. So I just was contemplating to do it again, but it sounds like I should. It's a, it's truly up to you, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a big expense for a should. Their cheapest program right now is $40 a month. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. okay. So that's a big expense. So you can do it or not. It's strictly up to you. Okay. Now, in terms of being able to see who's looked at your profile. Okay. Right. That helps. Okay. So and I'm, I'm not seeing all those profile views. I've got five people that's going to let me see for free without premium. The only reason that I have ever tried to know who's looking at my profile, it might be useful if you know that somebody from the company you're looking at is seeing it, mm -hmm. but you can also see it here. I'm not gonna have the name, but I'm going to have the rest of it. Okay. Okay. If you are going to follow up with someone, okay, then maybe having that premium is there, but just because I looked at your profile doesn't necessarily mean that I want to connect or right. that I want to know anything more about you. So we are finding that some people are finding that to be spam. Okay. Mm -hmm. The connection request, I saw you viewed my profile. Would you like to connect? Well, if I'd wanted to connect, I would have sent you the message. <laughs> right. There needs to be something more than just you looked at my profile. Right. So it's, it's up to you. There are a lot of people who find it very useful, which is what LinkedIn is hoping for. They are going to be building in, unfortunately, more tools, more features that are premium only. As I learn more about those tools and those features, we'll do another one of these. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing because we have... Two hours went really quickly. Okay. But I do have to go. So here's my question. So since this is my first time doing this again, do you find these sessions useful in this format? Would you like it to be shorter and cut out that networking piece and maybe just have a couple people introduce themselves or just introduce themselves in the chat? My goal is to be able to expand this to have more people here. Yes, Francine. Right. Um, sorry. No, please. And well, I have this thing with my phone and it's magnifying my voice. So if I sound like I'm weird, that's what's happening. I think it's a good idea to have people introduce themselves and just keep it to a minimum for each person. So it doesn't drag out the whole session. Linda, I had a question. Um, yes. How is this? How are you different now from the community college uh, days? Are you available for hire or what? What? Yes. So, great question, Dan. So, lunch and learn is free. Lunch and learn is going to remain free. Okay, regardless of what format that I do, lunch and learn will remain free. Um. But if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, yes, unfortunately, Dan, for those of you who worked with me back at the ECC days, ECC, I was working with you one-on-one -on -one for free. Um, this is now my business. ECC is not doing this anymore. So yes, I'm going to be charging you for those services. And what, what are the rates or, or, or prices or, or how? So it depends, honestly, Dan, on what it is you're looking for. I put my email address in the chat. Okay. Um, Helinda. Sandro, I saw that. Um, I apologize. My email for you is waiting in the to be finished, and I will send it out to you. So I'm also going to give you. Let me see. Sorry. You need some calls too now. Uh, Thanks, Linda. Yep. So at the bottom of my email address is my new phone number. 
So if we have Sorry. questions, you know about. Yep, you can email me, you can question me or send a question. Um, if you want to talk about what my services might be. Okay, what kinds of things you're interested in? Linda, yes. can I make a question, please? Absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna need the help maybe on this because um, I was on phone today and I had too many times my phone is stopped and uh, maybe I'm gonna need help on this. Can I come in your office to help me if you can, or can we do this for next time? So I'm sure I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, for for this for this thing, while well, we're talking for the link, how to apply for a job and how to find job. So yes, we can work with it one on one. Okay, I'm only working on Zoom. It's a, a much better platform, especially since at the moment I'm working out of my house and not planning on doing anything else. And uh, how you can help me? Can you, you want to call you or? You so, want to what I did was that I put a, you can email me and tell me what you want to do. I put a link in the chat for a quick 20 minute call if you want that. Okay. It's not going to be a coaching call. I'm happy to answer a quick question or to talk about what it is you need. Okay. Okay. So we can absolutely do it that way. The other thing that I'm offering for free is a job seeker profile. If you want me to highlight you on LinkedIn, uh -huh. I'm happy to do that. Just send me an email and say, that's what you want me to do. Um, I will send you some guidelines about a post and we can talk about what you want that to say. Because I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet with my test exam. And I don't know if I'm able to, to do that. I don't know what test exam you're talking about. For CompTIA. Okay. So, right. Are, you're a, an ECC student still for the CompTIA program, yes? Yeah. Okay, so they should be able to provide you with some resources. You can check with, um, ask Gina or ask Savannah what resources uh -huh. they're going to be able to provide to you in terms of your job search. If Because if they do it, they're going to do it for free. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and I'd much rather as a student that you do that. Okay, Okay. Thank you. If they're not helping you that way and you want to reach out, reach out to me and we'll find some we'll figure something out okay. okay thank you very much absolutely linda are we uh able to view these this video it's been recorded somehow so once i figure out how to do that dan <laughs> <laughs> okay you guys are my guinea pigs i admit it um so yes i will try and figure out how to send you the link to the video okay thank you okay in addition i'm going to at some point once I finalize a name, I'm going for the company that I'm doing. Um, I'm going to set up a YouTube channel, and they'll be available there as well. Okay, so great. That's my LinkedIn URL. If you want my email address, it's. Linda Brubaker coach at gmail.com. If you want a quick, okay, talk about what it is you, you need and we'll figure it out in terms of services at any time. You can either email me or if you just want to talk it through, there's a Calendly link for that. Okay. I'm gonna go, but thank you so much and I'll be in touch. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, nice. uh, appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. Thank, thank you, you all much. too. Bye-bye.